Well, the Ghostbusters car is going under the knife again. I've been having a rough idle. Uh, once I take off, it's actually it was running pretty good, but you know, sitting in a light and stuff like that, I just had this rough idle. And I went through and exhausted all the normal contributors to something like that. I uh, went through, checked all my vacuum lines. Uh, I rebuilt the carburetor. Uh, I checked my uh, my plugs, my cap, my rotor, my points, uh, the air filter, uh, made sure my gas was clean and all that kind of stuff. So I went through all the normal contributors that would normally cause, you know, a rough idle in a vehicle. Uh, but after going through all that and it still had it, I figured obviously I must have something that's a little more uh, deeper than that. So I went ahead and pulled the intake manifold off and I noticed now on these motors, they actually have what they call a valley pan style gasket, which is almost like a one time use crush gasket. That's, you know, you have these little ribs right here that when you can, when you torque it down, these compress. So it's like you had to get them right the first time. Now this is the original to the car. As far as I know, I don't, this car appears to have never been ever taken apart for any reason. So I believe this is probably the original one from 1972, but you can see the oil that was actually bypassing on both sides and it was on the two center cylinders on both sides of the engine here where you can see it just going right in between those and what that was doing is not only was that causing oil to go down to my cylinders which was giving me a little bit of a blue smoke plus it was also causing those plugs to you know foul up a little bit but it's also causing a vacuum leak you know so yeah I think uh, not only do I have the oil on the top but on the bottom side too you can see on the bottom side too you know the oil getting through there so this was uh you know causing a pretty good vacuum leak plus an oil leak uh within the engine so i've already gone through and you can see where i've already cleaned up you know the you know the motor here i got all that cleaned up but before that was solid oil all the way across that whole thing on both sides of the engine And all that and then same with the intake manifold the intake manifold was uh the same way it was completely you know almost solid oil between those two um ports right there so i already called an auto parts store they said they can have one of those pans in uh by tomorrow so this is as far as i can go tonight tomorrow i'll get the the new valley pan i'll get some uh rbt silicone for the little rubber end gaskets to make sure I get a good seal there and I uh, will put all that back together and hopefully that uh makes the car run right. Alright, well the auto parts store uh didn't get that valley pan gasket in today. Um for some reason I guess it got held up so it gave me an extra night to tinker. Uh so I did as you can see where I took some masking tape, taped off the port area where the intake manifold's gonna go and painted the supper section black here. So this way it, it kind of takes away uh, that, you know, a little bit of that old rusty kind of look to it, just kind of dress it up. And also, I uh, did the same thing with the intake manifold. I went ahead and uh, sandblasted it, cleaned it up really good, and went ahead and painted this just to make this look a little bit nicer. Uh, one thing I also noticed uh, while I was tinkering with this is this stud right here uh, goes right into this port. Now, it has nothing to do with the port itself. It's actually for, you know, the AC compressor bracket. Well, over the you know time of working on the car, I pulled that out a few times, and the nut was stuck to it, so the whole stud came out with it. Well, I didn't actually realize that it was inside this port right here. So when I just ran it back inside there, and you know you don't have any kind of sealing on it or it's not locked in there, I was probably getting a vacuum leak from there too. So uh, that's something to be watchful for if you're working on one of these cars to make sure that this is in the intake manifold, it's sealed, and it's all the way bottomed out. Because that would be uh, that would give you an air area where air can enter the intake manifold. Uh, but one of the other reasons why I decided to go ahead and just dress it up is because when I rebuilt the carburetor, I went ahead and kind of painted it a little bit. Now I know this is not how they normally do it. They're normally like dipped in a way, so they, that's what gives them like that that weird finish that the Rochester's have. But I just wanted to give it something close, so I just uh, picked up some paint that actually kind of gave me the look I was going for. So now I have the carburetor that's kind of dressed up nice, uh, the intake manifold that's kind of dressed up nice, and then I also went ahead and you know uh, painted the 
air filter as well and obviously the bolts that hold the intake manifold on just so it kind of just makes the top of the motor look a little bit nicer but what i was also meaning about the the bypass of oil you can see with the spark plug you can see how see how clean this one is this is probably maybe one of the front or back ones i don't know why it's having trouble zooming in but but let me go let me come over here a little bit but you see like this one right here you see how much more oil you know was getting on those now i knew i was getting oil on them even well before i tore this intake manifold off but i just contributed to you know being old a little wore out probably some valve seals were going bad and that was probably what was giving me my little that little bit of oil on there but i noticed it's been getting worse and worse uh so by pulling the intake off and looking at that valley pan uh really showed me that that was pretty much where most of my problem was then the other thing about these uh, pans that I, I kind of forgot to mention is when these are fully sealed against the cylinder head on this side, you know, things like that with your, you know, the little rubber end caps that go up underneath here, these things really should not fill up with oil like that. I mean, you shouldn't have any oil in there. I mean, you might get a little bit here, you know, because, I mean, it is inside of an engine, but you really shouldn't be able to practically fill it up like that right there. So that really goes to show that this was leaking pretty bad causing a lot of issues between um oil by getting through there uh causing that little bit of blue smoke i had of you know fouling up my spark plugs causing massive vacuum leaks so i'm pretty confident that that right there was a pretty much my main contributor to me not being able to get this car to run properly so hopefully once that pan comes in tomorrow i'll get everything on get it torqued up Get everything uh, retuned because I'm probably going to have to retune the carburetor again because now I'm not going to have that vacuum leak. So I'm going to have to rework the atom extra screws again. But hopefully I'll have this thing back on the road and running as good as it can possibly run. All right. I got it all back together. Now I kind of skipped the part of putting the intake manifold back on and torquing it down. Uh, I mean, there's tons and tons of videos out there of people showing how to install an intake manifold or you know, cylinder heads and stuff like that. So I kind of didn't really want to bore you with that portion. Uh, but I got everything back on, got it all tuned back up. Uh, it's probably gonna need a little finessing after I drive it a little bit. You see it uh, fires right up. So the next step is gonna be to, uh, as soon as I get a chance, uh, take it for a drive and see if uh, what I did, uh, fixed uh, my problem that I'm having. I mean, you can see the little bit of a shake that it has. And, uh, that's essentially what I was trying to get rid of. Now, it was a lot worse before, so it's definitely better, but I know it's going to probably need a little finessing with the tuning, So, but that's going to come with after I drive it a little bit. Uh, I did clean the spark plugs, but you know, I got to let, I got to let it also burn out all the excess stuff that's, you know, down inside the cylinders I couldn't fully clean out. So, a uh, little bit of driving. Hopefully that'll uh, finish uh, cleaning the uh, system out. Maybe just a little bit of fine tuning. And hopefully she'll be back on the road and driving at its peak performance. At least, you know, for a vehicle that was built in 72. Well, thanks for watching.